Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Grant and welcome to part two of our segment Coding with Miss Melanie, Coding Clinic Review for week, week two of our class, uh, January 23rd. Okay, so this week we talked a little bit about our different credentialing and we actually started learning module two by the time Coding Clinic came around. Some of the questions that I have sent to me throughout the week were sent by email. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about both of those, kind of talking about some of your module two questions and coding review. So the first thing we wanna talk about, in one of your assignments this week, what code would you use? We have an opportunity to look at our different coding books and determine would we use uh, professional services for CPT, HICPICS, or diagnosis codes for ICD-10-CM. You'll notice that the ICD-10-PCS would not be used in that particular activity, and we'll go into PCS coding much later into this term. For now, let's talk first about those four coding classification systems. There's two different types. There's facility and professional. And then right in between for both of those, you have your ICD-10-CM. So facility-based coding, what is that? Well. Your facility, your overhead, the lights, the hospital itself, not the all hospital services, but the room and board, your nursing staff, and all the supplies that they keep on hand is all part of facility billing. And this is something that we cover very strongly within AHIMA and your RHIT. However, do keep in mind there are facility coders for both AHIMA and AAPC credentials. With facility-based coders, they use PCS to indicate all of the dues, their procedures and services that are done within the facility, and ICD-10-CM to indicate all of the assessments or diagnoses. This indicates the why. Now one thing to keep in mind is that diagnoses apply to both procedures and procedures, no matter if you're facility procedures or professional. So what's the difference between professional? Gosh, I'm glad you asked that. Professional-based codes have two different classification systems, but really they're part of the same one. You have CPT, Current Procedural Terminology, or Level 1 coding, and HICPICS, HCPCS, or Level 2. Now there's different items specific to each of those for professional-based services. In your CPT, you find all of your procedures and services, or your due very similar to procedures and services found in PCS. However, keep in mind PCS is done for the facility or the hospital itself, whereas CPT is done for the procedures uh, for professional-based services. Now, when we say professional-based services, we're talking about the provider, him or herself. The provider is the one who is providing their time, their expertise and knowledge, and their ability to treat and diagnose the patient. And so their charge is for the professional service. If you keep that uh, definition in mind, it will help you greatly throughout the next three classes as well as this one. Your other type of professional-based services are your HICPICS or your what. This is what are we providing when we say DME, this is durable medical equipment. I'll write that down for you. Let me grab our pink here. DME, this is one you should memorize, durable medical equipment. Now who can think of what a durable medical equipment is? Perhaps you have a family member that has stayed in their home and had to have a nurse come in and see them. And one of the first things that nurse uh, did was ordered them a hospital bed so that they could be more comfortable and have their needs met a little better, especially if they had a little bit of movement issues. That would be considered a durable medical equipment. This is something that is being provided to them in order to help them with their health. Other things you may have uh, come across during your time as an individual, uh, crutches or splints and cast are all part of our durable medical equipment. These are things that are meant to last and go with the patient. Nebulizer machines, if a patient takes one home, this is considered durable medical equipment. Those of you that have had children, you may have remember being pregnant and being given a uh, band for your waist. Uh, some of the offices do that these days. That's considered durable medical equipment. Splints for your wrist, if you've ever had any kind of wrist issues. And if you haven't, you might after working in coding. Just saying. That's a joke. 
Um, all of these are considered durable medical equipment. So anything that's meant to help you with your medical care is considered a DME. Others included in HIGPICS are drugs. Any injectables that we give to a patient, no matter if it's given through a nebulizer machine, so it's a breathing treatment, or if it's given directly into the muscle of the arm or into the fatty tissue, into the vein, um, however we give it, the administration of that service is considered a do because we're giving it, we're doing it. But the what, what are we giving them is considered a drug which falls under HCPCS. So hopefully those definitions will help you this week as you look at your assignment for which code would you use or which book would you use. Don't worry about finding the codes now, but if you feel like you want to try and code those, uh, by all means, I'll, I'll be happy to give you some crit critique and feedback. Uh, that's all I have for this week. Make sure you check in every week in our CNM Glass segment, Coding with Miss Melanie, where we go over different coding questions that you may have throughout the week, throughout the module. You can send me assignments. You can send me quiz questions, and I'll be happy to review those with you. Until next week, have a great time.